We are coming into the cooking studio in the Ritz Carlton in the Cayman. We have Andrea sitting there. And what's your name, Chef? I'm Carlos. So welcome to the Ritz Carlton in Cayman. Okay, what are you going to be doing tonight? Well, for tonight we prepare a tasty menu. We're going to, to use lionfish. So lionfish is going to be the start this night. Uh, the first course is going to be a ceviche. We're going to use an unusual and unusual ingredients for preparing this ceviche. We have tomato, celery, lemons, and also we're going to, we prepare some pearl tempura butter crispies. So we're going to marinate the fish with this. It's going to be an interesting flavor and very fresh at the same time. And the next course is going to be a fish roll. We're going to apply another technique. We're going to use a Japanese technique to make this roast. So we are going to fry it inside some pure butter, and after that we are going to mix with the mangoes, with cucumbers, and also with the, um, avocado. So it's going to be nice. And the last course is going to be a traditional French recipe. It's going to be a lionfish laminier. A laminier means with capers, with almonds, butter, and fresh lemon juice. This is going to be an interesting menu, and also the last course is going to be the finger potatoes. It's very good. Cool. So and now let me introduce to Juan. He's uh, sous chef. Yeah, he's a sous chef. Wow. In so he is the most important person for the first course. Why? He's from Mexico. I'm this from Mexico. Mexico. Juan. But in Mexico and Ecuador, we have a culture of ceviche. Sweet. So of ceviche. Okay. So that's the reason for the oh, first course. Ceviche. So okay. Juan. He is an expert to preparing agua chiles, volca uh, chiles. Uh, it's a kind of ceviche that you can serve in Mexico. And for the next one, we're going to make a fish roll. Uh, this uh, lion fish, uh, maki, or sushi. Uh, I'm going to apply the techniques that I learned many years ago because I was working like a um, sushi chef in many restaurants in the past. So I'm going to apply this technique in this uh, roll. So it's going to be a nice presentation, a nice tasting. And at the end. It's going to be a nice experience for you. And the last one in Lamineer is a traditional French cuisine, like I explained before. So it's a traditional recipe. So we apply different cultures of South America. Uh, we're using Japanese cuisine and also traditional French cuisine. Cool. Have you made lionfish that often? Excuse me? Have you made lionfish that often here? Yeah, uh, we don't use often, but in Romania it's seasonal. All depends. In we, Romania? In, no, it's seasonal. If the oh. fishermen bring in the lion fish, we can prepare. Okay. All the team in the culinary department, it's very, very training to to work with lion fish and with different species that we have here in the Atlantic and also in the Pacific. Oh. Who bought the fish today? Uh -huh. You're fishing today? Mm -hmm. so you're the I swear, not many, but we have enough to cook, so you think it's enough to cook? I had clean them, I had to cut the spines off. Mm -hmm. I didn't get stung, which was pretty good. No, yeah, but you're an expert. I left, I left a couple of tails, and then like, I got the spines off the top, the bottom, and then I cut one tail off. One of the fish had uh, fish eyes in it, the smallest one. Oh, for sure. Uh, so we left the tail just for to make it pretty. Yes. And this is a really nice experience when you, uh, you claim life. You need to have some expertise to, to clean it. Like you see, yeah. if you don't clean in the right way, you can't um, hurt yourself. Yes, yeah. spice. Yeah. And this is not so dangerous, but it's going to have a lot of irritation and pain. So you don't want to it. But I was looking that you cut in the right uh, way. So you usually you, you have the whole fish, like you can see yeah, here. I the skin off the head is over here. And you have a lot of spines, there's a big spine over here, we have a lot of spines here, and also here, they can not Yes. So, when you cut it, when you, you need to open this spine and cut like at 45 degrees, and you doing this cut perfect. Good job, are you scissors? Ah, yes, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah but you need to be practical. You can use a knife, yeah. but if you have a scissors, it's going to be better. Better, yeah, because it doesn't mess up the knife, for sure. So. With a knife, maybe you can let your knife, which is always the perfect tool. Cool. So you, you approve the uh, the job. At the same time, I'm just cleaning fish. Okay. And I'm going to bring all the ingredients for this wonderful ceviche.
we have to take care of the all the sides that is coming in a small bones. So that's why I'm taking out those parts. And I can. Oh, that was the uh, top, yeah. Yeah, and uh, now it's perfect, perfect line. That's a lot of work. So you feel the bones when you go with your yeah. hand. You can feel. Those are special knives, huh? Yo. <laughs> yes. Wow. You see, in this part there is bone. Okay. This part, so That's the top, right? Yeah. So I have to take out. There's all the pains, the kind of sweet that you want. Sometimes we, we can slice, sometimes we cut and dice. All the pets. It's uh, like uh, Japanese, they call it uh, Peruvians, they call it Piraito. Uh, Mexican, Ecuadorian, Costa Ricans, we, call, we only cut and dice. Mm -hmm. For us, it's the traditional ceviche. And also for Peruvians, the traditional Peruvian ceviche is only. Fish and dyes and what well, marinated and lemons, uh, ají limo and petrol. We are harder and harder to find the live fish. We're catching so many in Cayman nowadays. We used to catch like a lot of them. And now they're getting slower and lower and lower to catch every every time. Which is of course a good thing in the end because uh, they're not supposed to be here. So the less we find, the better it is. <laughs> yeah, sure. Where'd they come from? Well, there's a lot of stories going about that live fish. So they are in the, they used to be in the Asia Pacific area. So basically, as I've been told, there are basically three theories why the, the line fish came to the Caribbean. Um, the first theory they came into the ballast water, the ballast tanks of uh, cargo ships. The cargo ship moving from Asia towards the Americas. They pump up water in, in, the, in the, to kind of ballast a ship. So it's a line fish. They live in the ballast tanks and get discharged when they empty ballast tanks in the Caribbean, that's one theory. The second theory is that they have been, like uh, somebody kept most like pets in the aquarium, and they got too large, a hobby ended, so they took the aquarium to the sea and kind of took them to the sea, that's the second theory. And there was a hurricane in uh, Florida? That's the third theory, yeah. The, the hurricane theory, which is actually the most proven one, that there was a, um, I believe a pet shop or an aquarium store, hit by the hurricane, all the tanks flushed out into the sea, because the shop was destroyed by hurricane, including the lionfish, and it brought them into the uh, environment. And if you look at the spread of the lionfish, it kind of started in the Florida area, the kind of Gulf of Mexico, Florida area, and it kind of spread out over the Caribbean from that central point. So that theory seems to hold water as being the... And even, even during the summer, the uh, lionfish go from Florida up to Massachusetts, Yeah, which is pretty far. amazing, getting the Gulf Stream yeah. and they yeah. fly up, but I don't think they like cold water that much, so... <laughs> no, no, they're more water fish, yeah. yeah. Again, life is a such not a problem. The problem is you don't have any predators here, natural predators. If you go to Asia, you've got like other fish eating them. So it keeps the population in balance. But here we don't have that, so they have no natural predators, which means they can just expand, 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 and take over the whole, whole ecosystem, basically. Next step, we're going to <coughs> We're going to prepare now the ceviche. When it is going to be uh, marinated the ceviche. Mm. Like us, one secret when you're marinating ceviche. First of all, you need to put a little bit of salt. The quantity of salt that you think is going to be for fish. You can marinate it first, and after that, you are going to squeeze fresh lemon juice. If you uh, uh, marinate the fish in this order fish, salt, and lemon, the fish is going to start cooking after 10 seconds. It's going to be very fast. So you put lemon, yeah. salt, the oil, fish, like we have now, okay. salt. Okay. We are going to mix everything. Okay. And after that, fresh lime or lemon juice. In 10 seconds, you can appreciate that everything is going to be served. The color of the, of the fish is going to change. It's going to be white. And this is like a famous called Lichel de Tigre. So 
but this is very good. So, Juanito, this is for you. We have salt here, sea salt for sure, better flavor. So after 10 seconds it's all cooked? Yes, now Juanito is going to put the salt on the top and after that he's going to mix everything and at the end fresh lime juice. This ceviche is almost ready in 30 seconds. If you have everything ready, in 30 seconds you have everything done. Wow. I always thought the cubed uh, ceviche. With the cubed ceviche it's going to take a little bit more. No more, okay. Yeah, but after 10 seconds also you can appreciate that the action of the lime and the salt is going to start around the fish. And this is perfect, this is amazing. For Peruvians, if they eat, or if you serve a Peruvian, a marinated fish for more than 20 minutes, for them this fish is cooked, so it's not going to be like a Peruvian style sushi. Peruvian style sushi all the time is fresh. <clears throat> and you can see it change color? Yeah, it will take time, but it will cook. The lime, lime is gonna help in the cook. The acid. Can you use lemon also? Yes, we can use lime lemon. Yeah, and in Latin America, we all the time. Like you see, this is uh, lemons. Mm -hmm. Now we are using fresh lemons. But the acidity in limes is different. Mm -hmm. If we use the major limes, it's going to be more acidity than this lemon. But if you use the traditional small limes, this is so acid that you can't. Now the fish is changing. If you use these uh, small limes, you have a better ceviche. And also for in, in South America, for us, it's very important to use these small limes. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Ecuador. Ecuador. And also in Mexico, in the yeah. Pacific area, yes. they use a lot of these limes. Yeah, we use the lime, actually. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Mexico? Mexico, yeah. Yeah, and this is the one of the best part of Mexico. It's right? You get that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And this is very interesting. Yeah, I love ceviche when I was living in Honduras, New Zealand, in the Bay Islands. Oh, so we made a lot of it over there, which is not too far away. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start mixing. Just like you see. We prepare in advance a marination. This marination is very simple. It's the same ingredients. The same ingredients that we, you can see here. But we blend. And this gives another flavor. And this small dice is going to be the it's going to give the texture to the ceviche. So when it is up to you, and to think to, to wash and organize it. Yeah. <laughs> this is 
very nice. You can practice and after Where are you from the Maybe a hundred rallies you can <laughs> make this, but you can see. <laughs> oh, right. Very nice. This just first time Simple but at the same time. Nice. Pretty, yeah. And I have here a small bowl with water. And I'm going to put here. Why I put in water? Because I want to radish take all this water and at the end and the presentation becomes crispy. So this texture for the for garnish for decoration this could be great. So I'm going to put two radish for each of each so I'm missing two more. the celery and cucumber and tomato mm -hmm. and depends what kind of uh, ceviche you want to do for Mexican ceviche we do we use only tomato uh, onion and cilantro and a scotch bonnet or we call it habanero and uh, cilantro that's it super simple and lime a lot of lime this is the key yeah I'm just going to open this. We call microgreens. We can find different kinds of microgreens, and this just for give a very delicate flavor. We have microgreens from cilantro with parsley, with um, also watercress. We're going to use this today, plus the radish that we cut in before. Juanito's in charge of this, now you are going to enjoy this uh, ceviche and at the same time I'm going to start filling the rest of the lionfish for the sushi and also for the lionfish over here. What does it taste like? Andrea and Mena. How does it fresh taste like? It doesn't taste like fish, like fish. it doesn't have a um, fishy aftertaste, so it's really clean taste. That's what's nice about it, right? It's not oily. It's not fishy, no. you can even tell you're eating fish. Because yeah. Yeah, nice. everybody's always asking like, what lionfish tastes like. It always seems a very fresh fish. It doesn't taste very heavy, I would say. It's a very light taste, always. And very much kind of fits in every kind of whatever you mix with it. It kind of works with it, basically. It's a very nice combination. 